Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Um, today I'm gonna show you another type of entity, um, the sensors. And to do that we are gonna make a very nice map, actually the Lost Woods. So in the description of the video you will find a link with a Lost Woods map that we prepared for this tutorial. So put this map data file in your maps directory. Copy paste, okay. And then add the map to your project like this chapter thirteen oops. Chap thirteen and let's give a name chapter thirteen lost woods. Okay. So, here is what it looks like. It's a quite complex forest and the interesting thing about this is that if you look um, more closely there are similar places. So this place looks very much like this place and also like this place okay and this place looks like uh, hang on let's zoom out this place I was saying looks like this one and finally this place looks like this one so um, we're gonna make a Lost Woods puzzle where the hero will be um, transported to from one place to another but uh, n the player will not notice uh, more precisely when the hero is here he will be sent here and when he's here he will be sent here and when he's here he will be sent here okay so this is the idea. And to implement this puzzle, uh, a first way is to use teletransporters. So you could make a teletransporter here and a destination here. Maybe you can show the grid. Teletransporters are resizable, so this could be a possibility, but destinations are and not resizable destinations are actually a single point. So you can't make this big transporter um, send a hero to exactly this point. It, when the hero is on the left part of the teletransporter you will you will want him to arrive exactly at the same point in this place. So a transporter is probably not the best way to do this. Even though it would be possible to make uh, uh, an invisible teletransportation with a teletransporter because there is this transition effect immediate and if you don't display a sprite and don't play a sound it will be uh, very quiet. <laughs> okay, But um, let's use a sensor. Also the problem with a teletransporter is that it can be avoided. Um, I forgot to say that in the French version of the tutorial, but it's important. When there are enemies, or if when there are enemies, the hero can, when he, the hero is hurt, um, it's like he he can fly <laughs> for for uh, just a second. And teletransporter teletransporters could be avoided like this. Mm, no, they couldn't actually. The engine blocks. The, the hero in this case but if you make I mean an object like the feather that allows the player to uh, jump over a hole the transporters will be avoided so this is another reason to use a sensor sensor are sensors are more low level 
um, they, they are simply activated when the hero coordinates match the sensor coordinate. When the hero square, the hero the hero is a 16 by 16 square. Remember, so when it squares, when it square exactly overlaps the rectangle of the sensor, it will be activated. No matter uh, is mm, um, independently from the state of the hero. So if the hero is jumping, if he is hurt or anything, uh, the sensor doesn't care. The sensor will be activated. Okay, so this one will be called sensor A1 and to represent the destination place of the sensor we we can actually use a, use a second sensor that we call sensor A2 why not but this one will never be triggered more precisely he will never have any effect it's only here to have coordinates and to make the code easier to uh, to compute the new coordinates of the hero we will just add to the hero's coordinates when he's on this sensor we will add uh, the difference of coordinates between the two sensors to the hero I don't know if it's clear <laughs> but you will see in the code and then uh, let's make another one I was saying here sensor B1 it will send here this one will be sensor B2 and finally another one uh, here sensor sensor sorry C1 and it will send the hero here sensor C2 okay good <coughs> Uh, maybe sh we should first try the map without any special code uh, and start the game up chapter 13 okay so for now I've put some sensors but oh um, what's wrong Okay, I, ha I have a save game in the wrong map, so mm, it's because of a, a previous chapter. But since I want to keep chapters independent, um, I will just remove the save game and start a new one. Okay. So, for now there is no, nothing special about this map. We have added some sensors, but we didn't write any code to define uh, what happens when they are activated. So, okay, let's do that. Open map script. So, as usual, first of all we get the map. Maybe we won't actually need to use this map object but mm, I always do that anyway. Um, so when sensor A1 is activated there is this event unactivated like with uh, switches has the same name sensor A1 unactivated we will uh, send the hero to new coordinates that are the the difference between both sensors so let's m let's write a separate function for that because actually we will need to call it from each one of the three 
pairs of sensors. So we will write a function send hero from sensor A1 to sensor A2. Okay. And same thing with B1 and C1. This function send hero, uh, we have we still have to write it, of course. It will be local to this uh, file, to this Lua file. So local function send hero from sensor to sensor. So it's a function that we define here that only exists in the, these files in this file because it is declared in a local variable called sendHero and it takes two parameters these two parameters are the the two sensors that we are using so the one that is activated and the destination one um, there is no local keyword for this function because this unactivated function already belongs to something. It belongs to this object here, sensor A1. This one, uh, we, we want it to belong to the file. If you forget the local keyword, then it will be global to all your Lua scripts of your game, of your quest. So that's not what you want. Um, so, we will need the coordinates of the hero, x, hero x and hero y, okay, um, to access the hero, actually the hero is yet another entity, just like um, sensor, ch chests and other ones that are here. And it has a name always, and this name is just hero. So it means that you can access the hero from any map script just with this variable called hero, like you are doing for the sensor. And all entities have a get position function. This get position function returns actually three values because in Lua functions can return multiple values. Um, three values, the x and y coordinates and the layer. In this case we don't really care about the layer so we can just forget to declare a third variable and the layer will simply be discarded. So we need to do the same for our two sensors from sensor x from sensor y I equals from sensor get position and same for the second sensor okay two sensor okay now we are ready to compute the new coordinates so hero x will become hero x plus coordinate of the new sensor minus the coordinates of the previous sensor. Are you okay with that? Same thing for the vertical coordinate. Okay, and uh, so far we did nothing because we just modified two uh, local variables that we are that are declared here in this function. So we need to give these new coordinates to the hero. Hero set position. Again, set position takes three parameters: um, the two coordinates and the layer. But again, you can uh, simply ignore 
the third parameter if you don't want to change the layer. All of this is documented. Uh, if you read the doc, there is this, this get position and set position available for all kinds of map entities. Get position, get position and set position. The layer is optional. And by default, if you forget it, um, it will remain unchanged. Okay. So, I think we're good. So, if you remember the map, for now, I'm here. Let's go this way. And we are not at the same place anymore. Because actually we are here now. We did that, so we were transported here. And now we are here. Um, this one will have no effect because it's actually the destination of this one. Uh, yes, of this. No, 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 of this one. Of course, B1, B2. So no effect here, and I'm back to the beginning of the map. And the, f the funny thing is that if you go to the north and to the east, for example, you can do that forever, actually. And we, re we really don't realize that we are teletransported. Because when we are here, we get here, and we do it again, <laughs> over and over again forever. And if you go left, you're back to the beginning of the map. So it's very confusing for the player. And the same is true if you go to the the south and to the to the south and to the east, actually like this and ta -da, I moved but we didn't realize there seems to be something to the west but if you do this and come back now you are in the border of the map so you can make great puzzles you can imagine great puzzles based on this idea. Maybe some uh, non-playing characters, something to do, something, some, some action to resolve, and when it is resolved you will disable the sensor, something like that. Actually it's very similar to um, the puzzle in Link's Awakening, in the forest of Link's Awakening. Except this time, all of the all of it is in a single map. There is no um, scrolling between different screens. Okay, um, I could do this forever, so maybe I should stop. Okay, and one last remark. Um, if you do this in a real game, you will probably want to put some bushes, some enemies and dynamic stuff. This will make your... Uh, this, will, this will be a problem because if you, for example, make some grass here... Um, grass, grass, grass... Gone. Oh, I had it. Grass. Um, okay. So grass here and here and here. Um, when the hero cuts the grass with the sword and then takes the sensor, he will arrive here. And um, of course, you will see a difference. 
so you will have to handle this and every time a sensor is activated you will need to update the state of the grass or of any dynamic entity that is in the in this area to match the state of what is in the previous area it's more complex with enemies because enemies are usually moving so you have maybe a solution is to transport enemies as well when the hero is transported maybe um, but we will not cover that in this episode anyway we, we haven't seen how to make enemies yet it will be for another tutorial okay so that's it for this video mm, this was about the <laughs> this very funny map uh, of Lost Woods made by Rankin Echo. So thank you, Rankin Echo. This is a great, great Lost Woods map. I love it. I hope you guys love it too. So you can say thank you in the comments. <laughs> okay, um, that's it for this tutorial. See you next time. Bye bye.